The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I want to give you three examples. The first example is from Rabbi Yudhisev Seg, the Manchester Rosh Hashiva. I love this story. He was traveling once with the Talmud. They were traveling on the train from Manchester, where he lived, to London. And they went into the economy class cabin of the train. Now, there were a bunch of hoodlums that were there. They were making a lot of noise. Rav Segal was trying to concentrate on the safer that he was learning, but he realized that he couldn't. After a while, he decided he's going to go into the first class cabin, and he went in with the Talmud. Now, the way it works on the trains and the conductors over there is that the conductor comes around and he asks you for your ticket. And of course, Rav Segal thought that he had already paid in the economy, but he thought when he goes into first class, he'll see the conductor, or the conductor will come around maybe by the other stations, and he'll tell him that he switched in the middle, and he wants to pay the additional fare. Somehow, between whenever he got into that first class cabin and London, the conductor didn't come. So now he felt, you know, he was stealing because he was in first class cabin. So when he came into the London station, he went to the clerk and he said, listen, you know, I switched in the middle for whatever reason and I want to pay the difference. So the clerk says, it's okay. You're here already. It's fine. So Rav Segal turns to his Talmud, isn't it the Bala boss? He's not, no, he doesn't own this train. He can't say that I don't have to pay. So he went to the manager and he said, listen, I switched in the middle and I want to pay the difference. The manager could not believe it. And you know something? Of course, he took the money from Rav Segal. And then he turned to the Talmud and he said, your rabbi is one in a million. What kind of Kiddush Hashem is that, right? What would we do if we switched in the middle and nobody came? Well, we figured, okay, good, we got a free ride. At least a free first class cabin ride, right? That's not what Rav Segal. That was an Indian of honesty. I'll tell you another thing. All of us know Rabbi Yankov Kamenetsky said many, many times that one of the reasons that he lived so long is because he was an Ish Emes. And you know what happened once that... Nebuch, his wife, was very sick and she needed an operation. And he wanted to call Rabbi Moshe Feinstein to get a bracha. Now, he had Rabbi Moshe's private number. In those days, it was called an unlisted number. Not everybody had it, but he had it. And he kept on calling Rabbi Moshe on the regular number. And Rabbi Moshe wasn't, it was busy because the whole world was calling Rabbi Moshe with Shilas. So the children of Rabbi Yankov said to him, Tata, you have his unlisted, his private number. Why don't you call the private number? Listen to what Rabbi Yankov said. Rabbi Yankov said, I was given this private number, you know what, in case of an emergency. In case that there's an emergency in Klai so I should be able to reach Rabbi Moshe right away. This is not an emergency in Klai This is my own personal thing. And so therefore, I have no right to use that number. Could you imagine that? That level of honesty. He had the number. And Rabbi Moshe certainly wouldn't have been upset if he called, but he knew that he was given that number for a specific reason. So he felt that it was dishonest. And finally, I want to tell you this amazing story. And this story, the parents, the mother of the children that this happened to, is amazing. She had premature children. They were born up, they were up in the summer in the mountains. And the child, the children had to have blood transfusions. They were rushed to a hospital in Valhalla in Westchester. She had given birth in Harris Hospital. They rushed them to Valhalla. And they, she found out that the kids needed blood transfusions. So the father went to donate blood, and they had a 16-year-old boy. He said he also wants to donate blood because it's his baby brother. What happened was he went, and when they came into the room where you donate blood, there was a big sign. Only those between 17 and 65 can donate blood. So the father said to the child, I'm sorry, you can't donate blood. You're not 17. He said, no, but I'm in my 17th year. I'm 16 and a half. I'm in my 17th year. He said, look, you're not 17. The sign says 17. You'd be lying and cheating. And you can't do that. He said, I'll ask a Shiloh. You'll see any rough will tell me that I could give. So the father said to him these words. I won't let you ask the Shiloh. You know why I won't let you, let you ask the Shiloh? Because no rough can make you 17. You're not 17. And if you look for a head to all your life, you're going to be looking for a terrorism. So he did not allow his son to give blood. Listen to this. The mother told me two weeks later, the kid was in a car accident. He wasn't the driver. He was too young. But he lost so much blood in the car accident that when they came, the medics came, they had to give him what's called concentrated blood. So he should just be able to make it to the hospital site, to the emergency room. And when the doctors found out that he would have given blood a week or two before, they said, had he given blood then? He would not have lived because he would not have 
replenished his supply of blood that he would have needed to get from the car accident to the hospital. So you know what the mother said? She said, I want you to tell everybody. Tell everyone. You know what the Pasik says? The Who wants to see life and have good days? What should they do? Until Lamadalad Pasik Yud Gimel and Yudalad, Nitzar Lishon Chameiro. Watch your mouth from speaking evil. Ul Svasecha Medabri Mirma. And your lips from not speaking deceitfully. She said, tell everybody, this is not just Nama Vertel. This is what Davana Melech is telling us is real life. You want life? Don't speak falsely. She says, my son is alive today and he's a very, very accomplished person today. I know him well. He's an accomplished person. She said, you know why he's alive? Because my husband was honest. He wouldn't let him donate blood. Had he donated blood... Well, he thought maybe he was doing a big mitzvah, but that would have been deceitful, and he would not have made it after that car accident. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.